Hello, Michael here with something a little bit different this week. Um, today I'm going to be looking at 3D printing from ZBrush. Um, it's something that I've recently gotten into and it's a little bit tricky uh, when you're first getting into it because there's a few things that you need to keep in mind uh, when you're prepping a your model. So um, I'm going to take you through how to bring your model from ZBrush uh, into your slicer. Uh, I'm going to be using the MakerBot desktop slicer because um, that works well with my 3D printer. Um, you could possibly use it with, with your 3D printer, it depends on what pr printer you're using. Um, otherwise you're going to have to use a different slicer. Um, but this particular tutorial um, works well if you are using the same uh, 3D printer as me, which is a FlashForge Creator Pro. But if you're using any other 3D printer, you can still use this tutorial to prepare your model for print uh, and then put it over to a slicing program. Or even uh, for some uh, websites like Shapeways, this would be appropriate as well. Um, so as you can see, I've got a pretty basic model here. Um, one of my characters, uh, which is typical of me to have a big ridiculous tongue um, and a dumb face. It's how I like to design them. The dumber looking, the better. Um, so you'll see here on the right that I've already got a ton of subtools, uh, which are basically all the different bits of him, um, all separated. And I'm going to want to combine those into one shell. Um, otherwise, the print, um, when you print it, it's going to, like, for instance, this leg, um, you can see it's intersecting the body there. It'll actually print the sphere inside the body as well, which is a waste of time, for starters, uh, for the print. And it's also a waste of material. Um, so to speed that up, you just want to have the one shell. Um, if you're just using a regular plastic like PLA ABS printer uh, for extrusion, you probably don't need to put a porthole in the bottom. Uh, I see some people like to, and I've done it um, with some of my prints, and uh, it is a good way to save uh, material and speed up the process as well, because if you've got them just sitting on a, de a desk or something like that, they're not designed as a toy um, that's going to be moved around, then having a big hole in the bottom doesn't really matter because no one's going to see it. But um, if it's going to be a toy for someone, uh, then it's probably a better idea just to keep it as a closed shell. So, um, how do we get this to be a closed shell? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, merge all subtools. Um, you'll see I've got, oh, I can, uh, I can, how do you do it, D? Uh, I can put smooth, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, dynamic uh, subdivision on. Um, I'm keeping it off for now. If you're uh, you trying to get like a smooth low poly model like this one, um, you want to be working with um, dynamic subdivision. But before you merge, it doesn't really matter if it's on or off. Um, just don't apply it. Keep it at its lowest subdivision metal, uh, level because we're going to apply the dynamic subdivision uh, once all these parts are merged. It just saves a little bit of time. So let's do that. Um, let's go merge merge visible and it creates a new tool um, up the top here uh, which is this one so you can see um, for some reason they're a different color let's quickly make them all the same color there we go um, so it is one object but um, if I hide part of the model you'll see that that sphere is intersecting the um, body there and you don't want that so what we're going to do is we're going to dynamesh this all together um, this is one method you could also obviously go through uh, and make cuts and then um, bridge gaps uh, that that's obviously going to give you a, a little bit tidier result uh, depending on what size model you're going to print uh, that might be a better way to go uh, but for doing this one I'm just going to use dynamesh uh, it's a lot quicker, especially if you're prototyping. Uh, like one thing I found that when I printed this model earlier is that his toes were too little and they sort of didn't like print up well. So I wanted to make them a bit bigger. So this is really good for rapid prototyping and it's good for your projects to be able to go back between this and be like, make adjustments to the feed or whatever and then, and then merge it and then you've got another tool. So I've, I've got one here previous that you can see. Um, but I'll quickly show you how to do the Dynamesh. So um, with Dynamesh, I'm sure you've used it before. Well, actually, first thing you want to do, turn on dynamic subdivision. You'll see everything gets smooth, and then you want to apply it and delete lower because we're going to um, dynamesh it, and it'll 
just prompt you anyway, but it doesn't really matter. So um, first level Dynamesh 128, obviously you can see that's not going to be good enough. It's too low res that the toes start getting dumb. So let's back out of that. Uh, let's double it, 256, and try again. Uh, that's closer, but probably not good enough. I'm going to back that one out and uh, go up to 350 odd, 352. Um, our target here, polygon-wise, is to keep it under a million polys, and you'll see I've got um, active polys up the top there. Um, so uh, all these tools uh, with the smooth, uh, with the dynamic subdivision applied, has brought it to 940,000 polys. Um, so dynameshing it will bring it down a touch, uh, depending on what level we do it at. So uh, this is 352, and um, that's pretty good. Um, obviously the thing that you want to look out for when you Dynamesh is um, the joins, they get a little bit pocky um, and so probably what you're going to want to do after you do a Dynamesh is just go through, smooth out all the joins um, just by, um, I'm just going to put, uh, what should we call it on, um, mirroring, so you just go through, I'm not on my Cintiq so I can't do this very well with the mouse but just go through and smooth it out. Try to keep your um, defined detail, obviously, um, as you're doing it. So don't overdo it on like the toes and things would be an area where if you just go a bit too hard, they're just gonna melt together. Um, but yeah, that's pretty self-explanatory. So um, I'll um, skip to the next part because you don't really need to see me smoothing out this whole model. Um, that's pretty straightforward to do yourself. Um, so, the next part, um, you want to grab your Z plugin. I'm just going to dock it on the right here. Um, and we're going to go to 3D Print Exporter. You don't have to worry about UVs and any of that junk. Um, I'm going to change it to millimeters um, because I live in Australia and we are on the metric system. Um, whenever you change any of these values, I'll change that to 50. It's going to change all of them uh, as though it's a square. It's not actually measuring the length and the width and the depth uh, to give you an accurate value between those. So uh, it's a good idea to just figure out like roughly how tall you want your model to be. It's your X value. Uh, I'm going to say I want this to be 35 mil tall. Uh, so that's going to be the one I change. And then we're going to export that as an STL by clicking on this guy here. Um, and then I'm going to chuck it in here. And I'm going to call it Chubbunny 3D Print Toot. All right, and that is the first part complete. And now we're going to move over into uh, MakerBot Desktop. And I'm going to show you how to prep the model for printing. Yeah.